Golden Sun is a testament to just how awesome a game can be if the development team is given a comfortable development cycle to get the job done. <laughs> Are you fucking for real? Hey everyone, today we're talking about Golden Sun on the Game Boy Advance. The prognosis is not looking good. A little history, Golden Sun's a franchise with three games. The first two were released on the Game Boy Advance. The last one appeared on the Nintendo DS in 2010 and ended with a to be continued screen. Good finish guys, really fantastic. It's a JRPG where you control four characters who each command a different element of the four classical elements through a fantasy realm in danger to save the world. Hey IGN, what'd you guys give Golden Sun? Hey Form Trash, what did you guys give Golden Sun? Raise your hand if Golden Sun is your favorite game ever! <laughs> Let me be 100% clear. Golden Sun on the Game Boy Advance is unadulterated fucking garbage, and I'm gonna prove it. Before we dive into this dislike maelstrom, I wanna make two concessions. The first, Golden Sun sounds great. The thing sounds better than most games I've ever played. The second, the game is graphically adequate, and the special effects in combat, while mostly just colored sparks, aren't exactly an eyesore. But that's where the good qualities stop. Camelot could write the book on not establishing the world. There's a tragedy in in the works and we don't learn anything about anyone. We learn about Synergy, which is just magic. Magic that lets you slowly grab your cloak with a floaty hand during a crisis instead of grabbing it like a normal person. Oh yes, no system! Does that mean there's branching paths and moral choices? No. In fact, only a single one of these actually changes anything about the game. And most don't even offer alternative dialogue. Seriously, how do you fuck that up? No, oh, and Garrett. This is perhaps the only example of character development he experiences because he's a greedy imbecilic child and actually dragged all that shit outside during a crisis. Also, if you ignore him, he chases after you anyway. Choice system. Camelot. Game design. If we can't hold this boulder, Veil will be destroyed. Save yourselves, you idiots, or kill its momentum. Or turn it away. Or do anything instead of just pushing on it with magic. I see a boulder, not a stream of lava. In terms of world building, monsters cannot jump tiny fences, but they can climb over boulders. <laughs> well, I've got to give the boulders some credit. At least they're everywhere to force me into a single forward path. Oh no, guys, Felix is in danger and nobody can help because the rope's too short. One, swim to him. Two, extend the rope with clothes or more rope. There has to be more rope somewhere. Three, move to the right side and throw the rope. Four, Felix, the shore is right there. Grab it. Grab it. Number five, go to twitter.com and write hashtag things Felix could have done with your answer. Anything at all, really. Fun fact, no personalities were set up for the characters in this intro and we get no indication of who the people we're supposed to care about are. Like this boulder falling is supposed to be a tragedy, but for who? You lose your dad you met for five seconds and three people with no importance to you, the silent protagonist Isaac, vanish. This whole scene is irrelevant and ham-fisted even though it sets up a plot point in the next game, but we'll get to that later. For now, they're losses of no importance to the characters because we have no fucking attachment to these people and no control over anything. So we basically just watch Dumbstruck as terrible tragedy happens. Oh look, two spooky, strangely colored, vaguely malevolent sounding people are talking and they caught us listening. They must be the antagonists, you cry in satisfaction for discerning the blatantly obvious. Well, you're fucking wrong. These characters who are at this moment trying to kill children after skulking around with scary music playing are trying to save the world, which is information that the game withholds from you until the sequel. Spoiler alert! You dumb fuck. I don't have much to say about Saturos and Minardi, but they're the most disingenuous attempt at misguiding the player to conceal a plot point. And the worst part is, it was necessary to set up this misguidance so that Golden Sun the game could happen at all. To make their shitty story work, they had to blatantly lie to the player. That isn't smart. That isn't clever. That's what fucking idiots in their first creative writing year do. Let's just keep walking though. Don't stare at the seven car pilot. Just keep going. Next, we have a time skip and we can get on with the game after all this time. Jenna asks precisely three years later what happened three years prior. What the fuck? As you may have noticed, the kids have been learning magic for three years. Isaac's mom is basically the personification of bland exposition and not an actual character. Whoa! Suddenly villains! I mean heroes! You dumb fuck! They were talking to the local alchemy scholar Creighton. You will hate Creighton by the time this review is finished. Presumably Creighton was just told S&M's plan, but he doesn't understand it. Surely they would have opened with, We need to save the world, but because everyone in this universe is fucking brain dead, this particular point was not mentioned. Because the heroes triggered a trap that almost wiped out the town last time, Creighton decides that he wants to sneak into Soul Sanctum, which is forbidden, and also what S&M did to almost wipe out the town. 
for science. How does that even make sense? Also, it's guarded by one priest? The first dungeon is a maze. You have to do light puzzles and push things. This is the backbone of Golden Sun's gameplay. It will not change from here on. Kraden says he comes here all the time, but it's forbidden to do because it can destroy the town, and so we're sneaking in right now. Did he just sneak in every time? You do this a lot. Hey man, I think we should go home so we don't destroy the town. Uh-oh guys, Kraden's me. Are you fucking stupid, Kraden? But we solve some puzzles and go through a portal and see an ocean. You're all idiots. This secret room houses the elemental stars, stones that contain the purified essence of each element. Also something about the stone of sages which is not here, but can transmute trash into gold. Probably not important to mention. And now Kraden wants to take them and Jenna enables him. Why are we stealing all powerful stones you think this might create the doomsday? Suddenly the heroes take Jenna and Kraden hostage, kinda deserve that, and force us to get the stars for them. They're gonna chuck the stars into lighthouses to awaken the true power of alchemy. Oh no! See why it's impossible to tell that they're heroes yet? Also, Felix is alive and he works for them now. What a twist! And also, this asshole who is extremely relevant to the second game takes the stars from you and he's also working with S&M. Also, he can fly and teleport. And that's all he does in this game. He takes three of the four stars, leaving you with one, and then a giant rock called the Wise One floats in. He tells us nothing and we don't know what it does. These cute critters are apparently released and fly all over the world, and the mountain is gonna blow up. The heroes escape and we're talking to a rock, but he tells us something that is absolutely essential to the entire plot here and now. If the lighthouses are lit, the world will be exposed to the threat of alchemy. As long as the lighthouses remain unlit, we're good. Remember when I said S&M were heroes? The plot twist in the second game is that they want to save the world by unleashing alchemy by lighting the lighthouses with the stars. And they are correct! This is how to save the world! The wise one, whoever it is, tells us the exact opposite for no apparent reason and tells us to hunt down SM and get the stars back. Also, aside from how blatantly the writers are lying to us, I want to point out one little hole in the script. Just stay home! Don't go on an adventure! And leave the one elemental star you have in the sanctum or somewhere safe! Lock it in a chest! Throw it in a lake! Do literally anything to keep S&M from it! And they won't be able to light the last lighthouse and therefore won't be able to unleash alchemy! Do you realize how screwed up that is? The plot is this massive flaw and you're just going to ignore it, aren't you? In case you're lost, I don't blame you. There were more keywords in that last bit than an introductory philosophy class. It also lasted about two hours. As a final fuck you, nobody tells you where the lighthouses are. Also, the wise one designates that only Isaac and Garrett can go on this quest, despite being teenagers in a town of people who use synergy all the time. Good choice. You'll meet the first Jin outside. Jin, those tiny things that were released when we took the stones are life forms somehow related to the elements. He won't take no for an answer. Choice system. You can use Jin in battle just like attacking and using synergy. Using them in battle sets them to be unleashed. You can also use multiple set Jin to summon things, usually things named after classical mythological beings that in no way represent said being. The first town we head to has a problem. To make it snappy, this idiot Hammett was visiting and gave his kid Ivan a rod. Ivan Lost it. Then Hammett left Ivan to find it and attempted to go back home. The bridge collapsed since the elemental stars were taken, so he went to a known town of thieves up north instead of going back to vault to rest until the bridge was repaired. Also, he didn't stop to tell his child. Intelligent characters in this game are far and few between. I want to make it clear, too, that every event not related to the lighthouses is filler and generally serves little to no purpose, and every bit of dialogue and every action is comprised wholly of incompetency and imbecility. I will not be covering each one. There are game scripts for that reason. Ivan is our next party member. There's bandits. They're apparently a foot tall each and you're armed to the teeth with lightning, fire, and earthquakes. Okay, you get Ivan's stupid rod back and he goes alone to the thief town to save Hammett because we gotta save the world. Do you think we'll go to Lumpa or continue without Ivan to save the world? Well, you're wrong! You dumb fuck. Lumpa is closed and actually a side quest that opens many hours later. When you try to progress, Ivan appears and joins your quest because 10 year olds can't break iron walls. Sick progression, bro. The ensuing dungeon is a maze. Also about combat again. You just spam attacks or spam synergy. No strategy involved. They don't even tell you that there's an elemental weakness system like in Pokemon. The only indication is how much punctuation appears after each attack hits. What? Or should I say, what? This town needs mighty warriors. So they let three teenagers take the job of going 
going to the forest of certain doom. This has nothing to do with lighting the lighthouses, by the way. In this town, everybody was turned into a tree because they tried to cut down the forest to the north. We go north and almost get turned into trees, but our synergy protects us when we need it, apparently. This never comes up again in case you were wondering. That is the single dumbest thing a video game character has ever said. Never speak again, you fucking idiot. There's talking trees! The ensuing dungeon is a maze. The dungeon after this dungeon is also a maze. There's nothing to say except each maze dungeon focuses on a mildly new gimmick or just reuses assets. You also get Jin in dungeons usually. You might be thinking that you should give all your Earth Jin to Isaac, fire to Garrett, and win to Ivan. And you're right! There's a weird class system that determines what synergy you can use depending on what Jin are equipped, but giving them matching Jin to the corresponding character creates the best results. Best results for spamming synergy to win battle, that is. You even recover the stuff just by walking around. Normally I'd be happy about that cause traipsing through monster infested dungeons in Final Fantasy IV with no magic gives me PTSD flashbacks, but in this game it makes it super easy to spam all the time. Also you gotta love a dungeon where instead of climbing over an obstacle and dropping down one floor, you climb five floors up so you can drop down six and crush your fucking knees. <laughs> Killing the boss makes Talking Tree good again. This is of course not absurd and makes perfect sense in the world of Golden Sun, a world where we risk our lives to destroy the world instead of just staying home and saving the world. Despite this tree coming to his senses, he's dying and can't turn the trees back into people, so we need to heal him with sacred water from up north. The water is in the lighthouse up north. You put three towns and two dungeons in front of us that were unrelated to the quest so we could be railroaded into doing what we set out to do in the first place. Fuck Golden Sun. Going to the north requires going through a cave. This cave is notable for being a maze, something not seen in the game until this point. I really appreciate the Camelot School of Game Design, just saying. Oh, by the way, Golden Sun's world is flat. So why is there ice place? Do you guys remember when Kraden said we wouldn't understand the ocean? Later in the game, Garrett will ask about the ocean again. We're by the ocean now. It isn't mentioned. Continuity. Now we're in snowman land. Everyone is sick, but they have one healer named Mia. Do you think she'll be the next party member? Well, you'd be right, you human being, you. But she sees the lighthouse flash and panics because only she, the caretaker, could enter it. Unless... Yes, Alex is from this town too. The gene pool's real thin. The only reason s and brought him is to open the door because you need a corresponding adept to open the door. Apparently. But for once, we're gonna do something plot related, so I'm down to enter the first lighthouse. The lighthouse is a maze, and you push some things, and they're all unique puzzles you haven't seen before and never will again. Heal the statue to go up the elevator. Excellent. But the beacon was lit and we failed one quarter of our job. But we can still go home because the guy said all four have to be lit. I'm just saying. Bitch, you mean Isaac didn't tell you about SM destroying the world? Oh, <laughs> of course he didn't. Then Camelot would have to lie twice and that's just no good at all. So Creighton and Jenna are still alive and Minardi takes them away and nobody in this entire exchange mentions that the villains are actually trying to save the world. <sighs> Sorry. Just pisses me off is all. Hey Saturos, why am I a fool if I showed up like the game is making me because you have hostages? A reminder that you want my Mars star, in case you've forgotten, and killing us is what you should want to do. Also, you don't know if I have the Mars star on me. Let's say I threw it in the ocean by snowman land. If you killed me, you'd never know what I did with it. You dumb fuck. So Saturos is cool and all, but he goes down because the power of Mercury Lighthouse, one that opposes his Mars alignment, is weakening him and giving Mia infinite synergy. So infinite healing. Golden Sun's battles are to be taken lightly. Alex was watching from behind the orb of light, and he thought Saturos would win because both of these people are idiots. Realizing that he's actually a very powerful character who now has infinite synergy, Garrett is weakened and Saturos recovers, he chooses to teleport away instead of securing the Mars Star. They're really going out of their way to prove that Alex's only competency was opening a single door. This entire altercation ends with Mia joining the party, obtaining the water that will heal Snowman Land, and backtracking through the dungeons we already beat to cure Tret. I recall that Mia didn't want the lighthouse to be lit, but she knew it would make the Healy water. So what the fuck, Mia? Curing the tree prompts us to go south because the bridge guard isn't a tree anymore. Is that seriously how we're doing this? But before all that, we gotta find McCoy! The guy who sent you on the errand to tree place owes me a reward. Oh boy, maybe I'll get a sick claymore for Isaac, cause McCoy's Scottish, you know? I'll cleave you and tan you bloody num days and all that. What do you think we'll get, guys? A gin? A sweet sword? Maybe a treasure? Actually, you get a honey drop. You dumb fuck. This has been part one of me shitting on one of my favorite games from childhood. Stay tuned for part two where it heats the fuck up.
I expect the noose of the Krakadon. Seriously, either this video gets ignored or just gets destroyed in the comments.